Hello and welcome. Uh, I'm glad you could join me today. Applied Arts had asked me to do a little video uh, just to explain my personal experience and some of the advice that I might have for you looking to get your first... You know what, I need to introduce myself so uh, I, I'd love to have like a title intro. Uh, maybe we could just cut to something quickly uh, just to get that out of the way. So here we go. Let's have a look. Well, that wasn't exactly uh, what I had hoped for. Now you know who I am. Uh, my name is Brad Monk, and I'm the creative director and a partner here at Central Station. Uh, and my experience uh, to speak to getting your first job in this business uh, is pretty deep in that I've seen hundreds of people uh, over the years come to me whether they're looking for an internship or maybe they've already done an internship and they're looking for their first job uh, in creative or in studio or as a designer and so on. So I'd love to tell you a little bit about uh, what I went through to get in and uh, I can tell you it's never easy. Uh, so I had about uh, 80 to 100 interviews uh, to, to get in, into my first job. It was not easy. Uh, I can tell you my book would have been terrible. It had ads that I'd made up, cut out of magazines for photographs, and then I would write lines underneath them, that type of thing. But what really hurt, and I want you to think about this when you're meeting with people, is people would flip through and they'd say, oh good, mm-hmm, good, oh nice. But they didn't say, that's not how you do it, or you know, it'd be good if you tried this. So uh, beware of some of the advice that you get if people just go through things. They're not always honest in that creative directors or, or creatives in general are very busy and when they're seeing young people trying to get in they don't always give the time or have the time to uh, teach you how to fix your book they you know uh, because it's ultimately your responsibility to figure that out so I saw a lot of people with a terrible book when I was uh, young and and it hurt because it took me a long time to realize this book isn't going to get me the job that I want but over time, uh, I learned what was good and what was bad, and I would buy all the award show annuals, and I would talk to creatives, and I would try to see other books as well. Um, and at the time, I was working in an advertising mailroom. So I was around creatives, and I knew uh, sort of what they would do and what good work looked like. And I gradually began to change my book and to figure out what was good, and the reactions got better. And I would show my portfolio to these senior people now who were really hard to get in front of. And they started laughing at the ads, which was good because they were funny ads. And, and then they uh, would start keeping a book. They'd say, I'd love to keep this. I want to show this to someone. And these were really good signs. I knew I was going in the right direction. So no word of a lie, after about uh, 80 to 100 interviews, uh, I actually landed my first job uh, as a junior writer. And I had never been so happy in my life. And I really never looked back in that it is a terrific business once you can break through. So next, I'd like to talk a little bit about who you should try to get in front of. You've got this amazing portfolio. Who should you meet? So let's have a look at this uh, chart. So here you can see, uh, this is a general advertising agency, what they look like. I mean, some are bigger uh, and have 50 or 60 people on this chart. And some are smaller and might have eight. So it doesn't really matter uh, to get your first job. You just want to be in a place where you think you're surrounded by really talented people and you will be able to learn lots from these people. So here's the chart. Who, the question is, who do you think on this chart you should call at the top? You see there's the creative director. Some agencies have two creative directors. Uh, and underneath that, you're just going to see an associate creative director. Some agencies might have a, a design director or a head of studio. And this breaks you into more of the design area or perhaps a, a project manager or perhaps you're going to get into uh, people who do production and, and build, uh, build files. So it all depends what you're interested in doing. But you look down, you're going to have writers, senior writers, and writers, and junior writers. So who on this chart should you call? Exactly. Any of them. When you're looking for your first job as an intern, it's not just the creative director you should be chasing. You should try and see 
uh, an associate creative director who runs a certain piece of business, or a senior writer uh, who works in a team, maybe you can get in to see them. If you just try and see the creative director, you're really limiting yourself. And I can tell you from my personal experience, having had so many interviews with people, while it was hard work at the time, the good thing about it was when I got my first job, I knew everybody in the business. I knew people at all the agencies. Uh, so when I was going to award shows and things, the first award show I went to, I knew so many people, it was, it was terrific. And it really uh, got me ahead. So that's my first chapter on who you should talk to. Now let's talk a little bit about your portfolio. <coughs> Okay, so you've made your portfolio and it's incredible. You went through uh, schooling or you're still in school. Uh, you've worked in groups and you've made some friends and you're all chasing the same dream. So let's talk about what it is you're bringing in uh, to show these creative directors or these writers or these uh, designers. Let's talk about it. Uh, for one thing, it's great when people take me through their book. I love to know what was done in school, what you did on your own, uh, things that you did in a group. Particularly if you are done your internships and now you're looking for a job. Too often I see things that were done in school when you've been out of school or you've done an internship and I'm seeing stuff that you did a year ago. And it makes me think, well what have you done in the last year? Uh, think of it as training. You shouldn't stop just because you're done school. You still need to train. So if that means going to a coffee shop and, and thinking of some ads you could write or there's a, there's, a, there's a store at the end of your street and you think, boy, I could do a really good campaign for them. I love that. It shows me that you're motivated and you're ready to go. Behind this wall is our creative department and everyone sitting there right now is working on ads. They're not waiting to work on something tomorrow or the next day. And I would, I would suggest you get your head in the same sort of game. You want to be thinking about this thing all the time, even if you're not working. Uh, the next thing is, be sure your book, you, even if you're in school and you're working through projects, it's great to show some things that you don't do in school. And I'll tell you why. School assigns the same projects to lots of people. So let's say the assignment you've done is for Kodiak. I'm going to see uh, in that couple of months, so many ads done by students for Kodiak, and they're also uh, they're because they were all done to the same brief. They're they're often very similar, and it it hurts for you then because you're not standing out like you should. So it's great to keep your school work in. You could even have a section in your book called "What I Learned in School," but do some other things as well uh, to show that uh, you know you like to think on your own. Very important. And, and the other thing is, I see a lot of books where at the end of the book I don't know what it is you're applying for. Uh, do you want to be a writer or did you want to be an art director? And uh, this is because the book isn't focused enough on your craft. So if you're looking to be a writer, make sure you've got writing in your book. And I don't mean copywriting, uh, I just mean headlines. Take a product, put it at the bottom of the page and write 10 headlines against it to create a tone or an attitude for that brand uh, that you think would be a really good fit. Uh, and the same with an art director. Uh, I see a lot of people who say, you know, I want to be an art director but I'm also a really good writer. Well, uh, I hate to tell you but those are really hard to do both incredibly well. Especially when you're going for your first job. It, you should show that your passion lies in something, be it art direction in the way that ads or type work, uh, or if you're going to be a writer, you should show that you're not just about puns, but you can think about words and writing and how to make people think or how to make a product have a tone of voice that no one else had given it before. So when I get to the end of your book, I want to know what you're about. If you're a writer, what type of things you like to write, or if you're an art director or a designer. Where do your interests lie? Have you got a style? And if, if you do have a style, how does it stand out? So that's what I'd like to see in a book. Next, let's talk about the interview. All right, the interview. Let's talk about it. I'm even nervous just saying it. So I can imagine how you feel having to get out there. So your book is amazing and you feel really good about it. You've done some portfolio nights. 
uh, or maybe you've been to some interviews and you're not sure how you did. Let me tell you a little bit about what I know and what I feel when I meet people uh, and how it plays out in my head. So let's start at the beginning. You walk into an agency and you, you uh, meet the person at the front desk and you sit down. You don't know how long you're going to wait for. Unfortunately, as I said earlier, you're meeting people who are busy and sometimes they run a little late and you just never know. And you, you can't take it personally. It's just that people are busy and it's the way that it is. So you're sitting in the reception. It's actually a great time to get your head in the game. Listen to, listen to music if it makes you feel better. Or look at your book and think about the ads that are in it, the things that you're going to talk about. We present every day in this business. We present internally. We present uh, to, you might present to your partner an idea that you have. Or you might present to the creative director. Or you might be presenting to a client you don't know. And that's all this is. This is just another day and you're going to be presenting. And in this case, you're presenting to the person who's interviewing you. So think about what you're going to say. Another great thing to do that I would love to see more of is if you present off of uh, the internet, if you're using a, your website or something, why not get the Wi-Fi password when you're waiting in the lobby? It's a great chance to get everything set up. You know it all works. So when you walk into the room that you'll be meeting in, everything's ready to go. It makes you look engaged and excited about the interview uh, instead of sitting with someone saying, oh, I need to get onto your Wi-Fi and uh, as, as though you didn't know you'd be presenting your portfolio. As far as your portfolio goes, I like them printed or on an iPad sometimes or on a computer. It doesn't really matter to me uh, how you want to present it, but I love it when it's presented to me. Most of the time, you just get handed a laptop or, uh, or a book if it's been printed out. And, and you flip through it, which is good because the opposite is if someone talks while you're trying to read something, it's, it's very hard to take it in. But it, you should have a little bit of salesmanship to how you approach it. Good work does not sell itself. You sell it. You sell the good work and the thinking and you should be excited about the work that you're showing. And one thing that I'm often surprised at is how often I'm looking at something and maybe I don't get it. There's something in, in your portfolio and I look at the ad and I say, I, I don't know what this means. And the person says, yeah, I, I get a lot of that. Well, right away I think, why did you keep it? Or, or why don't you, if, if nobody gets it and you get a lot of that, was this a test for me to go uh, and figure it out myself? So if something is failing in your book, get rid of it. It's not going to help you. It's never going to help you. And, uh, and if you ever want to push somebody on something, it's good too. If, if you know they don't have a job for you and you're seeing them, why not ask, is there something I should change in my portfolio? Uh, is there something you've seen before that, that uh, I should get rid of? Or is there something you could ask me to work on? Challenges like that are great because it forces the person you're meeting to uh, invest a little bit in what you're doing, opposed to just saying, yes, mm, good, nice don't have anything but thanks for coming. You need to get more out of them than that if you want to get some value out of this. So if something in your book is getting killed repeatedly, let it go and go to that coffee shop and, and do something else. Uh, the other thing I'd say about the interview is bring some interest into the agency that you're, you're uh, looking into. It's great to be able to talk about something you saw on their website that you thought was interesting or a campaign that they did. Not too long ago, I met with someone and I asked them, what have you been watching, or sorry, what agencies have you been going to? Who have you seen? And they named some agencies, uh, three or four agencies, which I thought was terrific. They've been around. They told me some people that they saw. And, and I said, oh, what, what work do you like? And they couldn't tell me. And it made me think, well, why do you like that agency if you don't know what work that they're doing? So it's good to, to know this stuff. You should know some of the Toronto agencies and know what work they're doing or what accounts that they have. It's very easy through the advertising uh, award books, which are great, by the way. They are a great way to do your homework. But you will know what agencies are doing what work and, and what work that you like or what work you don't like. You don't have to like everything. There, there's a lot of work out there that you might uh, have a, a thought on how you can do it better. So do it better. Show me in your portfolio a campaign that you saw and how you would do it. These are all really good things to get the conversation going, which if an agency doesn't have a job for you, the next best thing 
is that they like you and they will keep you in mind for something that comes open in the future. So finally, good luck out there. It's tough and we know it's tough. As people interviewing you, we know it's not easy to put your creative ideas on the table. But bring forward your best work, kill the ads that people are not understanding, go to the coffee shop as much as you can, and write or art direct and design all that you can. Bring yourself to the interview with passion and have opinions on things. Do your homework. Know how agencies work. Call everyone that you can and meet as many people as you can. And I guarantee if you do all those things, you will be on the street. No, no. I guarantee if you do all those things, you will get a job. Go get them. Thank you